try to be a responsible person, but sometimes the human side of me takes over. You know what I mean? Family Ties, weeknights at 6 on Channel 11. Stove leg. I'm Rich Gould. And I'm Al Roboski. We're here at Whitey Herzog's Powerhouse Restaurant. Let's have some fun this week. It is tough for me, Al, to believe that in one week, I mean, we're a week away from baseball, uh, albeit exhibition baseball, but uh, what a great time of year. That's right. March 3rd, the Cardinals open up against the Cardinals East, the Philadelphia Phillies down in Clearwater, and it's right around the corner. Now, the regulars are down there. Terry Pendleton getting a few swings uh, in the batting cage. He showed up with the pitchers to oh, get that knee back in shape. The pitchers naturally were there a week ago uh, running and stretching. And Al Roboski certainly was uh, down there. He got to talk to Tom Pagnazzi, who was a role player for the Cardinals, and asked him about being a jack of all trades. Well, that's what I expect. Uh, you know, that's the way I was used last year. And, you know, you never know. I might still see some change, uh, a little bit of time at first or third, like last year. Uh, hopefully not, because that means everybody stays healthy. And I'd rather have it that way, you know, because we have the, the chance to win. I mean, we have, for us to win, we have to have Pedro and, and Terry over there. I'm very thankful to Whitey and the whole organization for being patient with me and, and allowing me to come back at my own pace. They never put any direct pressure on me to come back sooner than I could, and I'm very thankful to them for that. Al, being the former pitcher, that you uh, that you are can you assess the cardinals pitching staff this early not at all really they've only been down there they're throwing a little bit the biggest concern is the health factor danny cox appears to be 100 percent i talked to greg matthews and he told me he feels outstanding oh i know i'm 100 percent because I was able to work out hard in the off season, and I never experienced any pain where the seasons prior it take two weeks to get the arm condition just because of the tear in there. Matthews will be a starter if his health holds, along with Joe McGrain, Jose De Leon, Danny Cox, and Scott Terry, who won seven straight starts from August 16th to September 15th. That's what I've always wanted to do. That's what that's, that's always been my goal since I did start pitching. I, I came out of the bullpen when I very first made the conversion, and then after a half a year of that, I started. And, uh, of course, the only time I was in the bullpen since then was with Cincinnati and with St. Louis when I first came over in 87 in the beginning of last year. But uh, other than that, I'd always been a starter and I always felt real comfortable as a starter and uh, I'd always wanted the opportunity to start for a full season, get 30, 35 starts and just see what kind of numbers I can put up. Whitey has two of the best closers in baseball in Ken Daly and Todd Worrell. We've been able to keep the club together uh, in the bullpen and Whitey's done a good job of uh, uh, using Kenny and I and uh, we you know we got the new addition of John Costello now and I think if you look back on the St. Louis Cardinals over the past few years the one thing that is I think stayed consistent and always been there it's been the bullpen. The critical area for the Cardinals has been the setup man. John Costello was outstanding but Steve Peters was a big disappointment so the Cardinals went out and acquired free agent veteran Frank DePino. Uh, the starter might struggle a little bit he might be down two runs getting into the fifth or sixth and then you have to go in and take over and hold the team right there it's a very important job and it does take a lot of pressure off of a closer if he knows that these guys are going to hold him he knows he's going to be in that game so mentally it's easier on a closer too a lot of people ask me you know if i want to be the stopper and if i want to start everybody doesn't really acknowledge the middle reliever but it's a real important job if, if you're able to do it because you know like you said your teammates know and your manager knows it looks like the final spot on the roster will be filled by rookie chris carpenter or veteran dan quisenberry if I'm going to give up line drives and fly balls, then I'm going to, you know, I'll watch you talk about it. <laughs> about somebody else pitching, not me. Uh, well, we want to wish you luck, and, and like I said, Whitey hasn't given up on you, so let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it, because I, if I didn't think I was going to do it, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd, uh, I'd be shoveling snow somewhere. And, Rich, I can tell you, shoveling snow is not a lot of fun, but uh, Quisenberry, five-time Rolaids Relief Pitcher of the Year, for the in the American League, and let's hope he does have something left. If he keeps the ball down, I think uh, he can still get those ground ball outs. Say, earlier this week, uh, everybody in St. Louis had a lot of fun. It was the Ozzie Smith roast. It was held out at the Adams Mark, about 1,500 people in attendance. The host was Bob Costas. 
and the proceeds went to Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. The work that Cardinal Glennon does exclusively with children, various stages of, of disease and, and affliction, uh, is ongoing. It's not a research hospital, it's a care, a caring hospital where, where children come from all over the country. Some of them wind up being there for a year, two years at a time. They're never turned away for care. The roast actually began at the cocktail party. Flo jo was there looking splendid. Harry Anderson of Night Court was on hand. So was Jack Buck. He let Ozzy have it. As a matter of fact, Ozzy got the needle from about everybody. I think he has a certain pectoral relaxions that uh, adheres to him, that is aloof and, and uh, stagnant in his own virility, and he's proven that. He's gone uh, from the bottom right yeah. to the middle. I think it must be a great thrill for Ozzy as a black man to be able to call his manager Whitey anytime you feel like it. You know, just say, hey, Whitey. You know. Aside from Deardorff, I'm the biggest one at the head table. We got Mike Rorty, he's about 5'10", and Ozzy's 5'9", and Costas is 5'7". I think I'm doing a little league banquet here tonight. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the little people, the little tiny people that fought off the cat with a number two pencil so that I could be here tonight. Well, what I've tried to do, Rich, is I've, I've tried to give something back. You know, it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world. The toughest thing for me, really, is, is being able to, to find enough time to do what everybody would like you to do. I, I, I can't take part in everything that everyone asks me to do, but I try and do my part, and that's really it. And, uh, here tonight, when Bobby asked me, need, when he said he needed my help, then uh, I was ready. Everybody at Ozzy's Roast Al had a lot of fun. I know you were there. I was there. It was a little bit long. It, was, it wasn't a roast at all, though. They were kind of complimentary to him. So that's about uh, what happened this week in baseball. When we return, you will meet our very, very special guest. They call him the man. That is, of course, Stan Musial when the Hot Stove League continues right after this. Some auto dealerships promise you everything, but when you get there, it's problems, problems, problems. At Gary Vincel Pontiac, it's no problem. That's because Gary Vincel Pontiac has teamed with GMAC to offer the first-time buyer a $600 gift. That's right, a big $600 down payment. Plus, all first-time buyers qualify for up to $500 factory rebates. No down payment, no prior credit, no co-signer, no problem. First-time buyer are been around the block. Come to Gary Vincel Pontiac and discover why we've been around for 52 years. Gary Vincel Pontiac, 3295 South Kings Highway. At Hardee's, we use 100% pure American beef because we never forget you can always go someplace else. At Hardee's, we use freshly sliced onions because we never forget you can always go someplace else. Turkey and bacon sandwiches, made the exact same way, except one was made with mayonnaise and the other with Kraft mayonnaise. Which would you rather have? These on the left made with mayonnaise or these on the right made with thick, rich Kraft mayonnaise, unbeaten in a national taste test? Well, if you go by taste, shouldn't you buy Kraft? Harry, if you don't want to end up in court, you better send a child support. I'm calling about your son, Grover. You better send money. His ski trip's over. Send the money now, you dig. Or we won't make our next gig. To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 10,000 locations, usually in 15 minutes or less. Cruising. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. Welcome back to the Whitey Herzog's Powerhouse Restaurant. I'll be in the audience fielding questions, and Rich, isn't it appropriate? We finally have a hitter that it's due for the Powerhouse Restaurant. He is uh, certainly the greatest Cardinals hitter of all time, uh, certainly one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Everybody who's been down to Bush Stadium has seen the statue in front of the stadium. It says, here stands baseball's perfect warrior. Here stands baseball's perfect knight. Bob Ramsey takes a look at the career of the man, Stan Musial. Oh, here we are. The 3,000th hit, perhaps, coming up here as a pinch hitter. 
The Cardinals trailing three to one. The ball game in the sixth. So the St. Louis fans may not get to see the 3,000 hit. Maybe it'll happen here in Chicago. Mo Drabowski ready. Buseal digs in. Line drive, there it is! Into left field! Hit number 3,000! A run is scored! Buseal around first! On his way to second with a double! Holy cow, he came through! The numbers Musial put up over the course of a 22-year career are simply staggering. A lifetime average of 331, Stan won seven batting titles, including three in a row. He belted 475 homers. The Denora, Pennsylvania native led the National League in triples five times and in doubles eight times. And Musial ranks in baseball's top ten all time in the following categories. Games, at bats, hits, doubles, runs, RBIs, walks, and slugging percentage. You have to appreciate a guy who owns the quintessential nickname, The Man. And what makes it an even better moniker is the fact that it was given to him by opposing fans. Specifically, the Brooklyn faithful, who routinely saw Stan dismantle Levitt's field with line drives. There are many stories that describe the magnitude of Musial's stardom, including the one about his chance meeting with a future president. And I was standing outside the hotel in Milwaukee, and I saw a couple of limousines pull up, you know, and, and uh, I, I, I jumped, I, I, I jumped uh, Senator Kennedy at the time, and uh, he came up to me and said, Hi, Stan, and... Uh, he said, they, they tell me you're uh, too old to be playing baseball, and I'm too young to be president, but we're going we're gonna to do it or something to that. <laughs> it's hard to believe that it's been 25 years since Stan the Man played the boys' game so well. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to introduce our very special guest, Stan Musial. Stan, first of all, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us here today on the Hot Stove League. I know everybody's going to want a shot at asking you some questions, but first, can you tell us once again how you got that nickname, The Man? Well, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I did such uh, uh, great hitting in Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn uh, field was about the size of this room. <laughs> and it was very close, and the stands were very close, and you could hear everything went, that went on. So every time I start walking up to the plate, you could hear this fan say, uh, here comes that man again. Here comes that man again. So pretty soon, uh, everybody picked it up, and uh, that was it. Stand a man. You know, they, right. they just don't have hitters like you anymore, and I know you're asked this often. Can you differentiate between ball players of today and the guys that you played with? Well, we had some great athletes uh, playing today, and of course, uh, uh, we had some great athletes in our day. Uh, I think you, if you can perform today and be an outstanding today, you can play in, uh, in the uh, 70s or 80s. Uh, you know, I, I, I played in the 40s, and I competed against some of the guys who were playing in the 30s. And I played till I was in the 60s, and I played against some of the guys who were playing in the 70s. So uh, the, uh, the longevity of baseball, uh, the years don't really mean that much because we have good talent uh, uh, in, in the big leagues all, at, at, at all times. Al Hrabowski is someplace here at Whitey's Powerhouse Restaurant with his first question, Al. Thank you, Rich. What's your question and what's your name, sir? My name is Mike O'Keefe. Got a question for Stan. Stan, in the mid-50s to late 50s, if the screen was not out in the right field pavilion, how many home runs do you think you might have hit? You think you might have broken the 60-plus mark? Well, you know, I played one season with, with the screen down. I was averaging about 30 home runs a season uh, during that time. And they did take the screen down, and I thought, God, this is going to be great. I'm going to hit 40, 50 home runs, maybe 60. But you believe, believe it or not, I hit about 12. <laughs> because, uh, you know, the pitchers were keeping that ball away. They kept it away and wouldn't let you hit the, come inside and let you hit the home run. So uh, I didn't like the string to come down. I'd rather have it where it, where it was and uh, t t take your chances. So uh, I didn't do very well with the screen down. Back into the audience we go. Al Roboski's out there. Go get him, Hungo. 
Okay, thank you, Rich. What's your name, sir, and what's your question for Stan Musial? Uh, my name is Glenn Stewart. Uh, the question to Stan is, uh, I remember reading uh, about uh, Julius Irving when he picked number six, and it had to do with his salary. Uh, why did you pick number six? When you came uh, to the Cardinals as a rookie, why, uh, you couldn't be too choosy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, I think years ago, Joe Medwick had that number. He was a left fielder, so uh, uh, about the year before that, Joe... Uh, uh, was traded to the Dodgers, and number six was just probably just laying around there. So, uh, <laughs> so they gave it. To, Butch Yaquin, our clubhouse guy, gave it to me. And it was a good, good number, good number, easy number to remember. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people forget when you broke into pro ball, you were a pitcher. I was a pitcher, but I, you know, I was a typical wild left-hand pitcher, and uh, I walked eight or ten guys a game, and I'd strike out about twelve or fifteen. But I didn't have confidence in pitching, uh, and uh, whereas I could always hit, I finally realized that I would never have been a Warren Spahn as a pitcher. <laughs> so I gave it up. <laughs> Let's take it back to another ex-pitcher who, who didn't hit quite as well as you, Stan. Al Ravosk is there. What's your name, sir? You're quite familiar to me, but, uh, and what is your question? Tino DeFranco, I've never been familiar with you. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, my question is, Stan, of today's baseball players, who do you think is the best hitter, the top two or three hitters? Well, Chino, uh, there's, uh, we have some good hitters in baseball. A very consistent hitter is, of course, uh, led the American League a uh, number of seasons already, uh, is uh, Boggs, is a very good hitter. Uh, we have uh, Don Mattingly from the Yanks, uh, is an outstanding hitter. Uh, I like uh, George Brett. Uh, he, he's a consistent hitter. We have a guy in San Diego. Uh, I think it's Wynn. Wynn is his name. He's uh, led the National League three or four times. And uh, so they, those four or five good hitters I can think of. I know you folks in the audience have uh, a number of questions to ask Stan the Man Museal, and we'll get with them. Also, we're going to let the folks at home have a try. It's the mailbag segment of our, port, of our show. That's the Hot Stove League coming back with mailbag right after this. few years, the U.S. dollar has declined substantially against the German mark and the Japanese yen. The result has been to drive the prices of foreign luxury cars dramatically higher. Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars? Sure makes Cadillac luxury seem like a real bargain. It's Free Wheels and Great Deals Days at 7-Eleven. I found this Geo in my Ruffles chips. Now guys think I'm cool and chicks think I'm hip. Your chance to win a free Corvette, Camaro, or Geo every time you shop. I got fresh ground coffee to start my day, and I want a Camaro. What can I say? If you find this game piece with a winning key in your favorite product, you instantly win one of 60 new Chevys or Geos. And now get free wheels and great deals like six packs of Coke and Diet Coke, just $1.69 at 7-Eleven. Coming on video cassette, it's no wonder Mick Crocodile Dundee is America's favorite Australian. He's got a way with women. Take your brow off. He knows how to make a graceful entrance. He's well-mannered in high society. Don't try to stop me. I don't want to stop you. I just want to get past. And he can talk his way out of a tough situation. What are your chances of getting out of here with that jacket on? Better than average. Paul Hogan stars in Crocodile Dundee 2, coming on video cassette from Paramount. Think about it. Or you can do it. At Vic Tanny. Okay, uh, you're the filly and you're the butter. Right. right. Half the calories of butter or margarine. Hm. Okay, who had the filly? Uh, right here. Uh, right here. Right. Right. Next time, butter your bread with filly instead. League with Stan Musial. We want to give the, the folks at home a chance to participate. This is our mailbag segment, and with the questions, here's Al Rabosky. Thank you, Rich. Our first question for Stan is from Andy Smith of Chesterfield. 
Stan, when you were playing, who were some of the nicer players that you played against? Your friends not on the Cardinals. And we played against, as uh, I could think of, was uh, Pee Wee Reese from the Dodgers. So Pee Wee's a nice uh, southern gentleman, and uh, he was one I can think of. Uh, Willie Mays was uh, fun to play against. He was a nice, easygoing guy, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, Roy Campanella was a catcher, and he used to like to talk a lot. And uh, those three or four fellows I can think of were all pretty nice guys. Who else we have, Al, in the mailbag segment? Question number two comes from Carl Paneer of Marissa, Illinois. Do you think the Cardinal fans are spoiled? And if the team was not this successful, do you think the fans would be just as supportive? The Cardinal fans are, uh, are the greatest baseball fans in the country. Even when we had the small ballpark at Sportsman's Park, we always drew a million, million and a half, and uh, we had always great fans. I think a good example of what we're talking about, our great fans, is this past season, the Cardinals were fourth or fifth, and uh, and they tell us that uh, this year they had the biggest advance sale on season tickets they ever had, over 20,000. So that's uh, that's remarkable. But the Cardinal fans are always great. They're always steady. They support the club. On top of that, I might say that the Cardinal fans have been blessed too because Cardinal always had great and outstanding ball players from Roger Hornsby, Frankie Fish, Cleaver Alexander, Bob Getson, Lou Brock, uh, and myself. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, talking about Medwick and Moore and Slaughter, so the Cardinals fans are great fans, but we always had great and outstanding ball players here in St. Louis. We appreciate all the questions that you uh, have sent in. Uh, we've got a number of them here on the Hot Stove League, and we still have a few more weeks left. We're going to take these questions down to spring training with us, so you can write a question on any of your favorite Cardinals. Send it to the Hot Stove League, P.O. Box 4659, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. And, of course, if we use your question on the air, you win a couple of tickets to see the Cardinals play this summer. Let's head back into the audience now where Al Robotsky has another question for Stan the Man. Thank you, Rich. You can see Stan hasn't lost a thing. A lot of questions from ladies. What's your uh, name? I have Evelyn Hamill, and I have a question, Stan. Would you have been intimidated by this mad hen Hungarian here if you had to bat against him? Well, you know, Al was an outstanding <laughs> uh, relief pitcher for the Cardinals, and, uh, you know, relief pitchers play an important part of baseball uh, these days, probably more so than uh, in our early days in the 40s. Whereas in a 40, one or two or three clubs had uh, good relief pitches. Today, it's very important to, uh, that you have uh, relief pitches. We have short relief pitches, long relief pitches, uh, stoppers. And, and so uh, Al was a great and outstanding uh, reliever. He had some great years for the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, I don't know if I'd like to hit against that high, hard one <laughs> that Al threw. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Stan, when he gets behind the mound and rubs it up and, uh, and really concentrates, how would that have gone over in your day? How would that have gone well, over in the Well, you know, uh, it, that was great uh, because, uh, you know, uh, rather than just playing state, straight baseball, you know, you've got to have a little fun in the game once in a while. You know, years ago we had Dizzy Dean, Pepper Martin, the Gas Ass Gang. We had a lot of color. And now, yeah, when he did that, it was a little colorful, colorful you know, and he served his purpose. He did the job. As long as you could uh, do the job uh, along with your antidotes, why, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another question from the mad Hungarian. Al Roboski, uh, take it away. Sir, your name and your question for Stan. Ray Bluth and Stan, I want to ask you a question. The idols uh, for me were Stan Musial, Red Shanice, Marty Marion. And I'd like you to maybe compare Ozzie Smith and Marty Marion, because Marty Marion was my idol at shortstop. Well, the, we all remember Ray. He was the outstanding bowler here in St. Louis for many, many years. And, of course, uh, he's a good baseball fan and with a very good question. Uh, we had two great shortstops in St. Louis, Marty Marion and Ozzie Smith. Now, Ozzie Smith is one of the greatest shortstops of all time because he's quick on the astroturf. He has a good moves. He can, he's very agile. He can tumble. And Marty Marion, he played on grass. He had that long... Uh, leaping, uh, and he had a long reach, and Marty could uh, could go in a hole and behind second base. So they're both great, great and outstanding shortstop playing on different conditions. But uh, these two guys will go down in history as two of the best shortstops that ever played baseball. 
Stan, tell you what, I want to see how smart uh, all these people here are at, the, at Whitey Herzog's Powerhouse Restaurant. We have trivia time coming back on the Hot Stove League with Stan Musial. You stay with us. Comparing the Nissan Sentra to the Toyota Corolla raises some interesting differences. The Sentra has more room. It has a bigger engine, more standard features, and it's sticker priced about $400 less. Looks like this comparison is a dead issue. The Nissan Sentra. See your Nissan dealer now about no money down and up to $500 dealer cash incentives. Glasses in about an hour? I thought, sure, as long as the lenses are simple. But I've got a tricky prescription. So I tried Lens Crafters. Lens Crafters crafts your quality glasses in about an hour by putting the whole lab right in the store so you can see better and work better in about an hour. Made me a pair of top quality no-line bifocals. And they did it in 51 minutes. No kidding. Lens Crafters, custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour. Four locations, Town and Country Commons, Fairview Heights, Crestwood Plaza, and North Lindbergh Boulevard. Wake up the country club. Turkey and bacon sandwiches. Made the exact same way. Except one was made with mayonnaise. And the other with craft mayonnaise. Which would you rather have? These on the left made with mayonnaise? Or these on the right? Made with thick, rich craft mayonnaise. Unbeaten in a national taste test. Well, if you go by taste, shouldn't you buy craft? Welcome back to the Hot Stove League. It is trivia time. We have some brave souls standing by with Al Roboski. Let's set things up for you. Uh, first of all, we want you to win, and we have tickets to give away if you get the answer correctly. These are trivia questions concerning Stan Musial's Great career. Three strikes and you're out. Now Roboski has an itchy trigger finger, so answer quickly. Al, give us your trivia question, and who's our first contestant? Okay, thank you, Rich. First of all, what is your name, sir? Don Edgerton. All right, Don, this is a question. How many home runs did Stan Musial hit on May the 2nd, 1954, in a doubleheader? Sunday afternoon, five of them. All there right. We, right away. Five home runs by Stan the Man. I was there at that game. And what do you remember most about it? Well, I was in the bleachers, and it appears that I remember yet that same day I looked over the bleachers and there was tornadoes going through Belleville and Wood River. <laughs> it was one heck of a day. Five home runs and Stan hitting them and then thunderstorms going through. It was quite an afternoon. Let's ask Stan what he remembers about that great day. Five home runs, Stan. Well, I uh, hit five home runs, and uh, I didn't know I set a record at that time, and uh, I came up one more time. Now, all the five times I hit the home runs, I didn't try to hit a home run. So uh, I came up the last time, the sixth time, and uh, I said, I should do this again. <laughs> <laughs> so for the first time, I said, I'm going to hit another home run. And would you believe I popped up? So you never hit home runs uh, when you're trying to hit home runs. They come naturally, and uh, that's the way you hit.